you guys. Very special video today. We are in a Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 9, putting down 520 wheel horsepower. Obviously, that's going all four wheels. We've been excited to drive and film this car for a very long time. Patrick has done an insane amount of work and he's put a lot of love into this car. Let's put the car through its paces, see what she can do. So you'd expect with a small four-cylinder turbo car that the boost lag would just be outrageous at 520 at the wheels. Let's roll on in second and I mean, it's right there. It's crazy fast. And it just pulls, there's zero hesitation. Dang, it's a fast car. That was 10 miles an hour for you right there. <laughs> That's what the Evo is all about, really. It is a complete, complete car in every single way. It corners, it does straight line speed when you do it, give it the right mods. You can carry four people, it's got the trunk space. So the interior of the Evo, I mean, it is what it is, right? You buy this car first and foremost for the drivetrain, the chassis, the sheer capabilities of the Evo 9 platform as a whole. You don't buy it as a luxury four-door sedan, but it's got the essentials. It's got everything you need. Everything's in a really good spot. Uh, steering wheel's in a good spot. Shifter's awesome. And you got the big tack right in front of you, right in the middle couple carbon fiber accents here and there it's at that kind of good era in cars where it still feels very modern I mean you look at the car on the outside you feel it on the inside you shut the door it all feels very modern but it's still old enough that it's got that kind of hint of classic Japanese just about it right it doesn't have too many driver's aids or anything it is a very real driver's car for sure Hey, my name is Patrick and this is my Evo 9 SE. I've had the car for four years. Um, it was pretty stock when I got it. And uh, unbeknownst to me at the time, it had cams and an aftermarket table, which the uh, previous owner didn't know. So I kind of got some freebies and uh, I started buying parts for the car before I got it. Uh, because in general, an Evo is something I've wanted since I was a kid. Since I, was, uh, I got my first ride when I was 15. So. You could say the anticipation was building up for quite a while. What was more important to me before actually buying parts was making sure the tune on the car was, was working effectively. So yeah, I got my laptop out and uh, started data logging and tuning the car. And because it's, you can extract a lot of free horsepower for your car and make it more reliable, just, just, just with a laptop and a cable. So to me, that was like the best bang for the buck at the time. And yeah, it's been that way ever since. Five hundred RPM. Wow, fourth gear pulls just as hard as third gear, if not harder. That's crazy. Holy crap! <laughs> and I mean, you can pull it up there in the rev range to places that you'd never think you'd be able to go. I don't know. There, there's something about all-wheel drive that for me personally, I definitely do prefer as a general rule rear wheel drive, but the Evo kind of changes your mind while you're behind the wheel because it's, it has different characteristics about it. It feels like you should be on a racetrack. Like we're not even pushing this car on the street. Whereas you get in a rear wheel drive car, you can approach the limits of grip when you're exiting a corner much easier. Whereas this car with the, with the diff that Patrick has in the back, when you're exiting the corner, you can definitely get the rear end to slip out if you're not careful. When you're rolling onto boost, the torque will throw the back end out. The sound of that blow off. <laughs> oh man, that's fun. That is a lot of fun. When you roll down the windows too, the blow off is crazy loud. You can hear the turbo spool up a lot louder than when you are in the car. But fourth gear, my God, does that carry speed. We're gonna go for power 
like this, you have to do a full rebuild. You absolutely have to. So when I rebuilt the motor, I took it as an opportunity because I knew I was going to go uh, with E85 um, to raise the compression. So I did a CP pistons and a turbo tough I-beam rods and um, we went to 10.5 compression, which is quite high for a turbocharged car. Um, but with the uh, high octane of E85, which is approximately around 180 octane, Yes, it does, you know, you use a lot more gas and it kind of negates the point for people who are being practical. But if you're a performance oriented guy and you end up like wanting to extract that power from what you already have, it's a great, great equalizer. So you're getting pretty much 108 octane gas. You're using on average about 30% more fuel, but the kind of boost and ignition timing that you can run uh, is, is ridiculous. And from the time I converted to E85 with the higher compression, on the same turbo, same setup, same cams, with all the, all the only changes were built motor, higher compression, and um, I did cams, a more aggressive cams, and I just did a slight port on, um, port on the head. We ended up um, jumping from, uh, let, me, let me be more conservative. I was actually more at around 400 dyno jet at the wheels, and I went straight up to about 520 horsepower at the wheels. Just, just from a little head work, E85 higher compression. Yeah, I, I would say there's, there's no way to an embark once you go E85. I highly recommend it to anybody who, who's into their, their cars and stuff. The car's first and foremost a street car. I drive it 90% of the time on the street, but when I do want the performance, I wanted this. The valving, the dual flow valve system on the old road and track really allows that I can simply just you know, adjust the dampening on the car, boom. Like, it's, it's stiffened up straight for the track, forward across, but then twist it back, and it's super plush on the street. Um, uh, also, I did a, what you, we call a wear rear dip. Um, it's essentially swapping out the plates for thinner plates, but you get to stack more. So it helps the, lift, uh, the dip <laughs> lock properly, and it's also slightly more aggressive. So Patrick has taken this to the drag strip. He's ran uh, low to mid 11s, trapping at 127 miles an hour. If he gets his 60 foot down, he'll easily be in the 10s. All right, so one of the very first things, and personally one of my favorite things about the Evo is the steering. Yes, that's right. The steering on the Evo, probably some of the best steering I've felt in any car that I've ever driven. The steering rack is crazy tight. For a four-door sedan, I mean, you put it one side, you put it the other. I mean, it tosses you around. Really insane. So Patrick's running uh, 245s all around. He's got Michelin Pilot Super Sports, obviously. One of the best street tires money can buy. There's no lack of grip. There's absolutely no lack of grip. <laughs> I can't get over the speed of this car. So Patrick did warn me, when you're coming out of a corner and you're throwing on the boost, you're rolling into the power, you've gotta be very, very careful feeding in the power and when that oversteer does come, because he said, I mean, the oversteer will come and the diff will lock up for sure. And you can feel it just starting to work. It's a really great feeling. I mean, that, that is some really nice grip. God damn. As far as grip goes, that's one of the most impressive chassis I've ever felt. The guy knows what he's doing. I mean, he's invested so much time into this car and E85, and you can tell he's very passionate about making the car run the best that it can possibly run, you know? You get these guys that just smack big turbos on an Evo without much thought, maybe a couple supporting mods. They don't do any research when it comes to tuning. They just kind of throw it all together, and hey, I've got a fast car, sure, but is it at its potential? Is it at its full potential? Well, most of the time, no, but Patrick's really gone down that rabbit hole of figuring out what his Evo likes, what his Evo doesn't like, and basically just going down different paths and from there. This is definitely a dream car for a lot of people. I know it was his dream car. 
thank you, Patrick, for letting me drive this car. I know how much this car means to you and all the work and stuff that you've put into it over the years. So hopefully we'll have some more Evos on the channel in the future. But for now, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Listen to the Roads and Travel podcast every single Wednesday on iTunes, Shout Engine, and wherever you get your podcasts. We've got new videos out every single Tuesday and Thursday now. So hope you enjoy those. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. We had so much fun filming and editing this unique car. One of the most challenging parts of the editing process is trying to choose which interview clips get used. We had an awesome 30 minute interview with Patrick, which we had to cut down to less than four minutes. What we have decided to do is release some bonus content on our website under the podcast page, including Patrick's full uncut interview. So if you want to get to know the owner and the car in greater detail, click on the link here. Thanks for watching.